How's it going guys? Joshua Lefemi here, live from Los Angeles, California. Come closer. My bro Sean Anderson is going to teach you how to do scripts in After Effects. He is such a talented VFX artist. I've known him for like eight years. This is one of the tutorials that you will need to watch all the way through to the very end. You will not regret it. Sean, the floor is yours. Thanks, Josh. Hey everybody, Sean K. Anderson here. And today I wanna to talk to you about what I think are the top 10 essential scripts for After Effects. Scripts are kind of like a plugin that you add to your workflow in After Effects. And most of them are designed just to keep things moving faster and to do little tasks a little bit quicker. And the best place to get them is aescripts.com. If you haven't already incorporated scripts into your workflow, then I highly recommend you do. For every menial task that you have to do for a project, there's probably a script that you can apply to make the steps faster and smoother. Okay, let's dive in into what I think are the top 10 essential scripts for After Effects. So let's make ourselves a little title here. Great, it looks amazing, perfect. But what if I wanna do something to each letter individually? Now there are a lot of effects you can add to text to make the whole thing kind of animate in a certain way each letter, but I know what you really want. You want every letter just split apart so that you can quickly click and drag and do what you want, right? Is that what you want? That's what I want. So we're gonna use a script called Decompose text, bam. Now this script gives you a couple of options. You can decompose characters, words, or lines. In this case, we only have a single line and a single word, so we're gonna decompose the characters, which means each letter. So the other option is to approximate position without expressions. Decompose, and as you see, it's a bit of a mess, but I can take each of these layers and drag them like so. Of course, with all your text separated, there's a lot more things you can do manually to them. Wow, 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 wow. This is what I call freedom. Bam. The possibilities are endless. But crap, all my anchor points are stuck to the bottom. Now you could individually go to each one and drag it, which is cool and all. Or a quick way to adjust each anchor point is with reposition anchor point. Pretty simple. You select all the layers you want to adjust the anchor point for and click, in this case, I want to make it center, reposition. Now when I turn, it's perfectly centered, bang on. Rather than before, I had everything on the bottom. And of course, you can change it to whatever corner you want. Now I have in the right corner, and everything goes, hangs on that part right there. The possibilities are not quite endless. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine possibilities. Before we go on, this episode is sponsored by the Scribble Accents Pack. With Scribble Accents, you can doodle up your music videos, travel videos, or anything funky that you have that you've just been needing that extra bit of something to spice it up with. Drag and drop straight into Premiere, easy and ready to use, a library of over 100 assets. Also available is Scribble Fonts, a drag and drop animated hand-drawn font library in six styles. Links in the description below. So let's say I want each letter to appear on screen at a different time. I wanna go from here Bring them all in. I have to manually click and do all this garbage. It just takes forever. Quick way we can stagger these letters is with a script called PT Shift Layers. In PT Shift Layers, you have an option to stagger selected layers. So I want these to stagger from O to I. So I'm gonna start with the O selected and go to the I. I'm going to go add to existing layer times and let's say two frames, apply, boom. <laughs> automatic. And if it's not enough, I can just keep applying that two frames. Oh, maybe that's too much. One, you can do negative. It's just fantastic. You can do half frames. So this is great. I've got my text coming on all wonky and it's all twisted. But Sean, I did all this work and my comp is stuck in HD. Who uses HD anymore? Well, everyone. But let's say we want to update this thing to 4K. The manual way would be to Apple K. Go in here, switch it to whatever 4K is. Now everything's resized. So then I gotta make a new null and I gotta attach everything to that null and make it bigger. And let's work smarter, not harder, as Nick Koo says. This script is pre-built into After Effects, which is very convenient. So we'll go to File, Scripts, and you see down here, you should have the option to scale composition. So we want 4K. We're gonna change the width to 3840 and scale. Now everything has been perfectly sized up to a 4K comp. So we've got our title, kind of flies in from outer space. We have it staggered. It's kind of clunky. We need to add some easing. We can do the stock standard easy ease, which is not bad. Or we could use a script called ease and whiz, which gives us some really nice options. So if we select all our keyframes and let's try something like scene and we're gonna do the in, 
we're going to apply. And let's just do some experimentation to see what that does for us. So we've got some easing at the head of the keyframes. Let's try out. Ooh, nice and smooth. We play with this bounce one, apply. Let's stretch these keyframes out. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Let's try elastic. Boosh. Ooh, nice and soft, like a cushion. Oh, that's comfy. I'm gonna add another frame to our stagger. Nice. Maybe I wanna fade in, so I'm gonna select all these layers. Let's try Expo, apply. It's kinda nice. Okay, now let's say instead we had this title as something like a shape layer. Right click, create shapes from text. And then also on that shape layer, we had something weird like a star, a polygon, and a circle. We're just going wild with this shape layer. And okay, we're ready to start animating this stuff. I could do double S and I could do my positions and do something like that and go like here. Depending on what you're trying to accomplish, this may not be the best way to work with shape layers. Rather than start all over again, you can explode this shape layer with a great script, explode shape layers. And it exploded. We've got all these different layers here and to explode it is as easy as clicking this button right here. Bam, it is exploded. A lot like the decompose text script, this allows you to break everything apart and gives you that freedom that you oh so desire. Look at that, oh, I, I want this there, I want these there, I want that there. Endless possibilities. Through a lot of my projects, I found that there are cases where I need to organize everything I have in my comp in a nice grid fashion. Maybe it's photos, maybe it's some type of graph. Look at this graph. Ultimately, to line everything up perfectly is a real challenge. So that's where I find Layers to Grid comes in really handy. So I'm gonna drag in my photos here. So I'm gonna select them all, File, Scripts, Run Script File, Layers to Grid, left to right, no. How many comes across? We got nine images, let's try three. How many pixels in between? Five sounds good. And boom, look at that. Let's get a little null here, attach them all. Bring that down. Ah, oh, look at that grid. Isn't that pretty? Up next, key tweak. Working with mass is always a pain, but key tweak can save a lot of headaches. So let's say I'm massing out this thumb here. I've duplicated the plate and reduced the transparency just so you can see what I've done. And you see After Effects help me track this, but it's not perfect. It kind of starts to drift off course. If I fix the points right here, of course it just goes right back to what it was before I fixed it, because it only changes it for that one keyframe. Key tweak helps us to adjust the points across multiple keyframes. So let's see here. The drift starts to happen from about here. So I'm going to put my endpoint there and around here. I'm going to select my mask, click select mask and shape vertices. Now you see this gives us a little guide so we can see which point it is we want to adjust. And then we also have the option, the number of vertices. In this case, I want to move them all. So I'm going to click OK. From there, you get the option to select how you want them to move. So since it gradually drifts off course, let's try fade in. And with these arrows, we can edit how many pixels we want to move it across. All right, let's see if we can move some of these individual points. Let's go back to one. Yeah, let's move that one. Let's try five. Let's move this one and this one. Let's go number of vertices two. Okay. And let's dial it back. We got a bit off in the middle here. Let's try this fade in, fade out. Three. Awesome. Maybe I wanted more of the palm in this area. And now if we go to work area constant, we can change this keyframe across the whole composition. So let's get one vertex and let's bring this down to that, okay. And let's really crank that out. Let's go 33 pixels. Bam, bam, bam. Nice. Now that has been changed across the entire comp. This can really save you some time and give you some good results. So not all video cameras record smoothly and what you can sometimes end up with are dropped frames. The client may ask you to do something crazy like, could you fix those missing frames for us? After which you reply, how about you record it again with a camera that actually works? What you should probably say is maybe. This script can fix missing frames by interpolation. So here we have this footage and as you can see, it's a little choppy. Every frame that's dropped basically just freezes the frame before it. So add markers throughout the comp where these dropped frames are. Then pre-compose that comp. This way all your markers are on the layer itself. Then with frame store and the comp you want to fix selected, just click apply. And you know what? It's not that bad.
We get a little bit of ghosting here in between, but ultimately these leaves look pretty great. Of course, his arms are moving quite a bit, so you're gonna have some issues there. Look at this background. This is all restored frames. Just a reminder of what this looked like without those restored frames, and now, Come on, that's pretty impressive. And last but not least, the one thing that everyone wants to do when they have After Effects is make a GIF. And the only real way I know how to do that is with a script called GIF Gun. So let's say I've picked this loop to turn into a GIF. That's right, GIF, not GIF. I don't see a J. It's like GIFT, but without the T, it's GIF. I'm not gonna argue with you about it. Let's just move on. Now what I wanna do is we have the GIF Gun script here. We're gonna click this gear. Here you can customize the width, the frame rate, most GIFs aren't 24 frames a second, so let's try 12. Max colors, maybe let's bring that down a bit. Your compression, medium seems good. I want it to be an infinite loop. Decide where you want to put it. Click done, make GIF. These settings will save, so you don't have to click the gear each time. So it's actually working in the background after exporting it. And there we go, we have a GIF. And you can dial things back and forth as you see fit. You just want to be mindful of the file size, of course. And those are what I think are the top 10 essential scripts. Be sure to support the channel by checking out our products, including the ones used to spice up this tutorial, like Film Grain Builder and the 360 Kinetic Transition Sound Pack. Links in the description below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow me at Sean K. Anderson on Instagram. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.